Welcome from myself, welcome from London. I'm David Rubens. I'm the Executive Director of the Institute of Strategic Risk Management. It is my pleasure for the ISRM to be hosting this event today. This is what I believe is a, going to be a stupendously interesting and potentially significant event as well. Um, one of the roles that we have given ourselves in the ISRM is to offer a platform, a global platform, to academics, practitioners and policymakers and to come together to be able to have a dialogue um, that would have meaning and significance for themselves and for the wider global community within which we're all operating. There is no question that the world we are operating in today has challenges that many of us had not expected and in many ways, in many ways do not feel prepared for. But if we are to find ways to deal with these challenges, then it is almost certain that amongst other things, we are gonna to have to find a new way of leadership, a new terminology, a new methodology, a new conceptualization. And I'm absolutely delighted to say that today, we have on our panel, five female leaders from around the world, from completely different cultures, different organizations, different risk environments, different backgrounds, and yet each one of which have individually um, made a position for themselves as leaders in significant organizations um, and in significant contexts. Um, I'm not going to spend any more time now than that. I'm going to hand over to uh, Deborah Higgins, who is um, head of the Emergency Planning College at the Cabinet Office and is on our Global Advisory Council. Um, I would just ask, remind our panelists, as I see you have done, to make sure that you have um, muted yourself, which you've done. Thank you for that. Um, for everybody around the world, we will be recording this and we'll be making it available. But for now, I think my job is done. And Deborah, I'm delighted to hand over to you. Thank you, David. Can you hear me okay, everybody, on the panel? Yes, I'm getting the thumbs up. Well, thank you, David, so much for asking me to chair this event. Um, it's just the rehearsal time. I have already been inspired by the, the women uh, that you can see in front of you on this panel, and I feel very privileged to be in your company. Um, I'm the chair of this call, but also the head of the Emergency Planning College in the UK, which is the Cabinet Office College, which teaches civil protection to, to domestic and international customers. Um, it's operated by CERCO. Um, we sit in defence in the space and security area. So enough about me, you will not hear anything else about me today, um, you'll be thankful to know. So um, I, I'm really going to get quickly onto this amazing panel that we've got in front of us. Um, and to really just let you all know that we've got two hours slot today. Um, we don't anticipate having a hard time uh, filling that time. Um, I'm not going to make any comments about us liking to talk a lot in our agenda, um, but I have laughed with the ladies yesterday when we were talking about this, and I did ask everybody on the panel what their preferred pronoun was, um, and it is she or her. So in any of your questions in the chat today, um, please bear that in mind. Um, we've also um, agreed between us and ask you kindly if you're referring to any um, individuals or organisations that you're sensitive um, about that. And we as individuals, we are representing our own personal viewpoints and not that of our organisations, just so that you're clear on that. But thanks for joining us today. It's fantastic. I'd like to introduce you first just briefly, and they will introduce themselves far better than I will, Dr. Reem Al-Shamari, who is on the line today from Kuwait. And Reem and I had a, had a chat already this week, but she is um, a female CISO or CISO. So for those of you who don't know, that's Chief Information, Information Security Officer. And actually information security is quite heavily represented on the panel and in the audience from what I can see. So Dr. Reem, we are so lucky to have you here today. Um, you have amused me already when I was stalking you on LinkedIn uh, this week by saying that you are a mother of knights and princesses, which I thought was fantastic and I love that. Um, you also have in your LinkedIn profile, and, and we chatted about that you really believe that sky is not the limit 
Um, it, we can go beyond the sky. And I think you talked to me about that as a parent, as a professional, that how important your motivating factors were. So Dr. Reem, if I can um, come to you to introduce yourself to our audience, please. Thank you so much, Deborah, and thank you, David, uh, and all the amazing panelists. It's really a privilege to uh, join all of you. Uh, and very briefly, uh, I am a CISO of Kuwait Oil Company, and one of the largest, largest oil companies within Kuwait uh, in oil and gas industry, uh, and also a co-founder of Women Cybersecurity Middle East uh, Group, where we have uh, more than 80 brilliant ladies uh, members, uh, ranging from rising stars in high schools up to uh, MDs and executives, ladies, and even CISO like my, uh, myself. Uh, uh, I'm also representing my country, Kuwait, in various forums of oil and gas within the region, as well at a global uh, level. Uh, I've, as a background, uh, I have academic bachelor degree in computer engineering. Uh, I did my ma master's in MBA, as well as the PhD also in business from Aston University. Then recently, I have graduated from uh, Harvard Executive Management Program. Uh, so you can say that uh, I have that both mindset of technical mindset along with the management mindset, which really helped me in getting a broader perspective of understanding things from two ways in one mind. And uh, this may becomes to a passion where I love and enjoy learning. And uh, this is really a bliss to have it within a leader to keep learning. Uh, that's uh, in short who I am. And uh, you have already introduced me that I am uh, a proud mother of a beautiful uh, princesses and uh, very brave, courageous uh, knights. Thank you so much, Deborah. Thank you, Dr. Ring. That that was really lovely. Um, I'm very very happy to meet you. Um, you. You did you did make me chuckle yesterday as well as a little intimidated by your extremely good and long experience. So um, brilliant to have you today, and I know that you've got some really great insight to share with us. So next I'm going to come to Danietta, and Danietta is joining us from Chicago. Danietta is president of a Covenant Security Solutions company. And again, I've had the privilege of catching up with Danietta this week. Um, Danietta, could you please introduce yourselves to us? Well, good morning to everyone. Actually, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, as, again, um, as Dr. Green said, it's a privilege and an honor to be on here with everyone this morning for me. Um, I am the president and founder, as she mentioned, of Covenant Security Solutions. Um, I have been that since about 2003. Um, prior to that, um, I worked with the Department of Defense, U.S. Department of Defense, um, as well as uh, privately with um, Booz Allen Hamilton and the cybersecurity field. And one of the things that um, I'm really excited about talking today with all of you is um, women in security and what that path has looked like for myself and for my colleagues. And um, one of the organizations that I'm a part of that I, that I enjoy assisting are several different organizations geared toward women and minorities and increasing their participation in the cybersecurity field in particular. So with that, I'm gonna turn that back over to you and let the other ladies introduce themselves as well. Thank you so much, Danietta. And I was interested um, when we were talking about you, your background as well as an engineer in the US Army um, in a civilian capacity. So I'm sure that'll come out today as you've clearly had an interesting and long career in different sectors. So that, that will be interesting to bring that out. Thank you very much. So next we have Louisa Schneller. And poor Louisa actually has tonsillitis, but she's kindly still joined us today and is soldiering on. Um, but Louisa's calling in from Prague today, but you may recognize that her accent is maybe sounding a little bit Australian. Um, Louisa is a risk and security management software consultant for Team Macro. And um, I'll leave Louisa to let us know, can you speak all right, Louisa, to introduce yourself. Yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm co-director of a company called Team Macro, and we provide software solutions for enterprise security risk and management. Uh, I've worked for the last 10 years as a consultant in that area, uh, based in Prague, but I'm originally from Australia, and that's why I'm a member of the Australian Women in Security Network, uh, which is a fantastic organisation, and that is uh, what's led me to participation in this event today. 
so we've implemented a variety of solutions covering GDPR, comp uh, GDPR compliance, data analytics, business continuity. Uh, but our flagship product is incident management systems, uh, which is based on a converged approach to security management, which I'm particularly passionate about. I've just written my dissertation on the state of converged risk and security management and what can be done to increase its implementation. Um, our software has been in use in over 2,000 locations globally, supporting 28 languages. Uh, we've done this for a wide range of industries, including logistics, retail, uh, wholesale, energy and utilities, and construction. Uh, and this means that over the years, I've been able to see how corporate security is practiced uh, in a, a wide uh, range of industries uh, and experience personally how well or not so well uh, women are integrated in it. So I'll pass back to you, Deborah. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. And you've already already touched on some of the sectors that, that you work in as well. So that's that's very interesting. Thank you. Right. So last but not least, Sutapa Sanyal from Delhi calling in. Hello there. So as the first director general in the Indian Police Service, I guess you've had quite an interesting career and uh, lots of insight to share with us on being female in your um, in your life. Obviously, I mean, this is we were laughing yesterday is how do we know what it's like to be a man and that this is the question we get asked a lot as women who have been successful in their careers they say well what's it like to be a man how would we know quite frankly um so sutapa thank you very much for joining us today from from delhi um please could you introduce yourselves and let let, let us know how and who you are first of all uh, thank you very much to the is uh, RM team and David Rubens in particular, and a heartfelt namaste from India. So I was a part of the Indian police service for over uh, three decades plus. And uh, in this service, we uh, are given different assignments which uh, cover different areas of policing. And security is one of them. So for about five years, I was uh, the uh, advisor security to the uh, biggest gas company here, the Gale India Limited. I was looking after the entire security, all India security of this uh, public sector unit. And uh, my core interest lies in uh, the security and safety aspects of women, children, uh, including human trafficking. And that is my area of passion too. I work in these areas. I worked, I've done a lot of work in this area before I superannuated and I kind of continue doing the same things like mm, I am a consultant to the uh, Kailash Satyarthi Children's Foundation that is uh, he is a Nobel laureate and I also work on uh, issues related to women's security especially uh, the training aspect of it right because I feel uh, if the police uh, personnel are trained properly and if they develop the right attitude, if they kind of understand the powers which lie within them and outside them, they can be brilliant transformative agents. People look at them as law and order maintaining agents, you know, uh, 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 crime detection agents, but actually I look at them as great uh, transformative agents and that is something which I'm spending my time on going around and talking to them on these issues, training them on women, uh, children, and human trafficking related issues. And I also offer um, independent consultancy and uh, uh, I'll be setting up my own company on diversity and inclusion because that is one area which I found was missing in the police services. So that is something which uh, I would love to work on so that we have more diversity uh, in uh, the organizations around us, especially in the security industry and elsewhere too. We need women, we need more women uh, in all these uh, industries. So that's who I am and I'm here. I interact with uh, distinguished people like all of you on these issues, which I think are of uh, common interest to all of us, yeah. Thank you so much, Sutapa. We're really lucky to have you 
um, on, on with us today. And I'm sure that you've got some views that will be interesting to our, um, our audience out there. And we have a wide and varied audience today. So um, for everybody that is interested in asking a question to any of our panel members, please use the chat. Um, what, what we would do is come to those questions when and if we can. Um, and also, as David mentioned at the beginning, we will be recording this so that any questions we can't quite get to or that don't come out during our discussion today, um, you should be able to see on the, on the recorded chat and we will, we will get back to you on that. So, so we had a, a, an interesting discussion about what questions we ought to be considering as this group. And one of the things we all agreed on was that we didn't just want to have a chat. Um, because everybody's got different experiences, great, and they're important. But one of the things we wanted to do is, is, is raise the issues and, that we're all experiencing. There were definitely common themes which will come out today, but also then to offer some insights, some experience, and some practical um, ways of, of overcoming these. And we also spend a little time talking about what opportunities we think that we have to help each other and what the future security profession and that in the widest sense possible um, is looks like to us and what can we do to help to shape that as Reem was saying at the beginning that this this really for us is is new to get together on this scale um, in this gender and at this level in this particular sector so I'm hoping it's the start of something fantastic. 